Hello, hello, welcome to day number 171, June 20th. I hope you had a wonderful Father's Day. And today we say happy birthday to my sister-in-law, Lisa. Happy birthday, darling. God definitely blessed me with a sister-in-law that is just a sister the in-law can be raised because she is my sis so happy birthday darling love you and today we're going to be reading from first kings 22 1 through 53 for three years there was no war between aram and israel then during the third year King Jehoshaphat of Judah went to visit King Ahab of Israel. During the visit, the king of Israel said to his officials, Do you realize that the town of Ramoth Gilead belongs to us? And yet, we've done nothing to recapture it from the, from the king of Aram. Then he turned to Jehoshaphat and asked, Would you join me in battle to recover Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat replied to the king of Israel, Why, of course! You and I are as one. My troops are your troops, and my horses are your horses. Then Jehoshaphat added, But first, let's find out what the Lord says. So the king of Israel summoned the prophets, about 400 of them, and asked them, Should I go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or should I hold back? They all replied, Yes, go right ahead. The Lord will give you the king victory. But Jehoshaphat asked, Is there not also a prophet of the Lord here? We should ask him the same question. The king of Israel replied to Jehoshaphat, There is one more man who could consult the Lord for us, but I hate him. He never prophesies anything but trouble for me. His name is Micaiah, son of Imla. Jehoshaphat replied, That's not the way a king should talk. Let's hear what he has to say. So the king of Israel called one of his officials and said, Quick, bring Micaiah, son of Imla. King Ahab of Israel, the king Jehoshaphat of Judah, dressed in the royal robes, were, were sitting uh, uh, King Ahab of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah, dressed in the royal robes, were sitting on thrones at their threshing floor near the gate of Samaria. All of Ahab's prophets were prophesying there in front of them. One of them, Zedekiah, Son of Keniah made some iron horns and proclaimed, This is what the Lord says. With these horns you will gore the Arameans to death. All the other prophets agreed. Yes, they said, go up to Ramoth Gilead and be victorious, for the Lord will give you will give the king victory. Meanwhile, the messenger who went to get Micaiah said to him, Look, all the prophets are, prom are promising victory for the king. Be sure that you agree with them and promise success. But Micaiah replied, As surely as the Lord lives, I will only say what the Lord tells me to say. When Micaiah arrived before the king, Ahab asked him, Micaiah, should we go to war against Ramoth Gilead or should we hold back? Micaiah rep replied sarcastically, Yes, go up and be victorious, for the Lord will give the king victory. But the king replied sharply, How many times must I demand that you speak only the truth to me when you speak for the Lord? Then Micaiah told him, In a vision I saw all Israel scatter on the mountains, like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, Their master has been killed. Send them home in peace. Didn't I tell you? The king of Israel exclaimed, exclaimed to Jehoshaphat. He never prophesied anything but trouble for me. 
Then Micaiah continued, Listen to what the Lord says. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the armies of heaven around him, on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, Who can entice Ahab to go into battle against Ramoth Gilead so he can be killed? There were many suggestions. And finally, a spirit approached the Lord and said, I can do it. How will you do this? The Lord asked. And the spirit replied, I will go out and inspire all of Ahab's prophets to speak lies. You will succeed, said the Lord. Go ahead and do it. So you see, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouths of all your prophets, for the Lord has pronounced your doom. Then Zedekiah, son of Keniah, walked up to Micaiah and slapped him across the face. Since when did the Spirit of the Lord leave me to speak to you? He demanded. And Micaiah replied, You will find out soon enough when you are trying to hide in some secret room. Arrest him, the king of Israel will order. Take him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to my son Joash. Give them this order from the king. Put this man in prison and feed him nothing but bread and water until I return safely from the battle. But Micaiah replied, If you return safely, it will mean that the Lord has not spoken through me. Then he added to those standing around, Everyone mark my words. So King Ahab of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah led their armies against Ramoth Gilead. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, As we go into battle, I will disguise myself so no one will recognize me. But you wear your royal robes so the king of Israel disguised himself and they went into battle. Meanwhile, the king of Aram had issued these orders to his 32 chariot commanders. Attack only the king of Israel. Don't bother with anyone else. So when the Aramean chariot commander saw Jehoshaphat in his royal robes, they went after him. There is the king of Israel, they shouted. But when Jeho Je Jehoshaphat called out, the chariot commanders realized he was not the king of Israel and they stopped chasing him. An Aramean soldier, however, randomly shot an arrow at the Israelite troops and hit the king of Israel between the joints of his armor. Turn the horses and get me out of here. Ahab groaned to the driver of his chariot. I'm badly wounded. The battle raged all that day and the king remained propped up in his chariot facing the Arameans. The blood from his wound ran down to the floor of his chariot uh, and as evening arrived, he died. Just as the sun was setting, the cry ran through his troops. We're done for. Run for your lives. So the king died, and his body was taken to Samaria and buried there. Then his chariot was washed beside the pool of Samaria, and dogs came and licked his blood at the place where the prostitutes bathed, just as the Lord had promised. The rest of the events in Ahab's reign and everything he did, including the story of the ivory palace and the towns he built, are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. So Ahab died and his son Ahiza became the next king. Jehoshaphat, son of Asa, began to rule over Judah in the fourth year of King Ahab's reign in Israel. Jehoshaphat was, was 35 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem 25 years. His mother was Azuba, the daughter of Shili. Jehoshaphat was a good king following the examples of his father Asa. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight. During his reign, however, he failed to remove all the pagan shrines and the people still offer sacrifices and burn incense there. Jehoshaphat also made peace with the king of Israel. 
the rest of the events in Jehoshaphat's reign, the extent of his power, and the wars he waged are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. He banished from the land the rest of the male and female shrine prostitutes who still continue their practices from the days of his father Asa. There was no king in Edom at that time, only a deputy. Jehoshaphat also built a fleet of trading ships to sail to Ophir for gold. But the ships never set sail, for they met with disaster in their home port of Zion Geber. At one time, Ahaziah, son of Ahab, had proposed to Jehoshaphat, Let my men sail with your men in the ships. But Jehoshaphat refused the request. When Jehoshaphat died, he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. Then his son Jehoram, Jehoram became the next king. Ahaziah, son of Ahab, began to rule over Israel in the 17th year of, the, of King Jehoshaphat's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria for two years, but he did what was evil in the Lord's sight, following the example of his father and mother and the example of Jeroboam, some son of Nebat, who had led Israel to sin. He served Baal and worshipped him provoking the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, just as his father had done. Acts 13, 16 through 41. So Paul stood, lifted his hand to quiet them, those in the synagogue, and started speaking. Men of Israel, he said, and you, God-fearing Gentiles, listen to me. The God of this nation of Israel chose our ancestors and made them multiply and grow strong during their stay in Egypt. Then with a powerful arm, he led them out of their slavery. He put up with them through 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Then he destroyed seven nations in Canaan and gave their land to Israel as an inheritance. All this took about 450 years. After that, God gave them judges to rule until the time of Samuel the prophet. Then the people begged for a king, and God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, who reigned for 40 years. But God removed Saul and replaced him with David a man about whom God said, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. And it is one of King David's descendants, Jesus, who is God's promised Savior of Israel. Before he came, John the Baptist preached that all the people of Israel needed to repent of their sins and turn to God and to be baptized. As John was finishing his ministry, he asked, Do you think I am the Messiah? No, I am not. But he is coming soon, and I am not even worthy to be his slave and untie the sandals on his feet. Brothers, you sons of Abraham, and also you God-fearing Gentiles, this message of salvation has been sent to us. The people in Jerusalem and their leaders did not recognize Jesus as the one the prophets had spoken about. Instead, they condemned him, and in doing this, they fulfilled the prophet's words that are read every Sabbath. They found no legal reason to execute him, but they asked Pilate to have him killed anyway. When they had done all that, they pro all that the prophecies said about him, they took him down from the cross and placed him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and over a period of many days he appeared to those who had gone with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. They are now his witnesses to the people of Israel. And now we are here to bring you this good news. 
The promise was made to our ancestors, and God has now fulfilled it for us, their descendants, by raising Jesus. This is what the second psalm says about Jesus. You are my son. Today I have become your father. For God had promised to raise him from the dead, not leaving him to rot in the grave. He said, I will give you the sacred blessings I promised to David. Another psalm explains it more fully. You will not allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. This is not a reference to David, for after David had done the will of God in his own generation, he died and was buried with his ancestors and his body decayed. No, it was a reference to someone else, someone whom God raised and whose body did not decay. Brothers, listen, we are here to proclaim that through this man Jesus, there is forgiveness for your sins. Everyone who believes in him is made right in God's sight. People, no, something the law of Moses could never do. Be careful. Don't let the prophet's words apply to you. For they say, look, you mockers, be amazed and die. For I am doing something in your own day, something you wouldn't believe even if someone told you about it. Psalm 138, 1 through 8. I give you thanks, O Lord, with all my heart. I will sing your praises before the gods. I bow before your holy temple as I worship. I praise your name for your unfailing love and faithfulness, for your promises are backed by all the honor of your name. As soon as I pray, you answer me. You encourage me by giving me strength. Every kind in all the no, every king in all the earth will thank you, Lord, for all of them will hear your words. Yes, they will sing about the Lord's way, for the glory of the Lord is very great. Though the Lord is great, he cares for the humble, but he keeps his distance from the proud. Though I am surrounded by troubles, you will protect me from the anger of my enemies. You reached out your hand, and the power of your right hand saves me. The Lord will work out his plans for my life. For your faithful love, O Lord, endures forever. Don't abandon me, for you made me. Proverbs 17, 17 and 18. A friend is always loyal, and a brother is born to help in time of, of need. It's poor judgment to guarantee another person's debt or put up security for a friend. Amen, Jesus. Thank you for your word. I will see you guys tomorrow. Have an amazing day. God bless you.